Um, my name is Dr. Ziad Farah. I'm a consultant, rheumatologist, and a general physician. I work mostly in West London area. I do clinics at the HCA Chiswick Medical Centre, as well as at uh, Cromwell Hospital. All of our tendons and ligaments have a little cushions of fluid between them. These are called bursa. They work to lubricate the area where the tendons move. If you like, without the bursa between the tendons, tendons moving in opposite directions and rub against each other. So this keeps the movement flexible and smooth. At a bursa, if it is under a lot of pressure or a lot of strain, for example, because of inappropriate loading onto the tendon or ligament, can become inflamed. And that is what is a bursitis. A bursitis can cause a lot of quite unpleasant symptoms, actually. The main thing really a patient's complain of is pain. The other th main symptom is stiffness. If you'd imagine the bursa is there to lubricate the, the, the movement of the tendons. So if it is inflamed, then this can cause catching sensation. It can cause pain on movement and it can cause reduction in movement. The most particular, you know, common area where I see bursitis is usually the shoulder or the hip. And that um, uh, can make movements in these areas quite difficult. It can have a significant impact on usual daily activities. So bursitis is quite different from an arthritis. Uh, if, in simple terms, if we think about a bursa is a cushion of fluid between tendons, whereas an arthritis is the joint itself. So one, they're in different places, for example. So whilst a, an arthritis, if you have an inflamed joint or an abnormal joint, uh, this can lead to pain in movement in all different planes, whether it is um, you're moving the joint yourself or if, if I, as your doctor, is moving your joint for you. Whereas with a bursitis, it'll be the movements that you try to do yourself. But if I, for example, were to examine, say, for example, you had a shoulder problem, I moved your arm for you, it would be less painful. And that's because the bursa is more involved in active movements in the joints. It's actually just a different location. But in terms of experience, you have very similar symptoms, which are mainly stiffness, pain and reduced mobility. So bursitis is um, is treated mostly in a similar way that you would treat, for example, a tendon or a muscle injury. Uh, in, in simple terms, to begin with, you'd start with conservative measures, whether it's applying ice if it happens quite quickly after a certain exercise uh, program, resting it, and simple anti-inflammatories, whether it's uh, ibuprofen, paracetamol, or over-the-counter remedies. More chronically, if it's there for more than six weeks or so, it might need uh, other interventions. Um, steroid injection under ultrasound guidance is something that I often recommend, but understanding that the bursitis became inflamed to begin with because of a mechanical problem. An issue with how the joint works and how the tendons are working means that the main way of treating bursitis is with physiotherapy. There's been an imbalance in how the, 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 the uh, joint is being moved. And as a result, if you the underlying mechanical problem isn't addressed with physiotherapy, even after an injection or anti-inflammatories, the, the bursitis problem is likely to happen again. Now, in other some rare condi conditions where the bursitis is part of a a more generalized systemic problem, like a diagnosis of polymyalgia rheumatica, where the bursa in both shoulders and both thighs can be inflamed, more systemic treatments may be appropriate. And those are things that I would look at as a rheumatologist. So as alluded to before, because a bursitis is mostly because of a, a mechanical imbalance or an abnormality in how the joint moves, uh, unless the original problem is addressed, it is likely to happen again. So for example, with trochanteric bursitis, which is the bursa at the outside part of the hip, unless it often happens in patients who may have, for example, lower back problems or knee problems, and as a result of that, they're mo not moving correctly on their legs. And unless that problem is sorted with physiotherapy or strengthening exercise, the bursitis may well occur um, over and over. And in some cases, however, it might be a simple injury during exercise that's caused bursitis, and then maybe one bout of physiotherapy and a steroid injection may be sufficient. But in general, I think unless the underlying problem is not addressed, it may continue to be a problem.
Yeah, this is a really, really good question. And I think I, I get asked this quite a lot. I think the main thing is trying to understand what has caused it to begin with. Um, usually um, bursitis can be in the context of people who do exercise or also in people who may be walking quite a bit um, and um, uh, stretching before doing any exercise, warming up appropriately. Also stretching at the end of exercise would be really, really important to avoid um, uh, um, problems with both the tendons, ligaments and the bursa. But also understanding that when you have a bursitis it's important to only gradually build up the exercise and not to overload the joints inappropriately very quickly because if the you imagine the area is recovering from a recent bursitis and um, uh, episode then overloading um, when it's too early may cause the problem all over again so listening to your body understanding when it's when it's healing and recovering and building things slowly